Yes, he is moving by his might. It is good that we are here. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Just tell your neighbor, it's good that it's we are here. Good. It's good that we are here. Amen. 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 Lord. And there is a word from the Lord. Lord Jesus. We certainly give honor to him. He's the Lord of our life. Our Lord and our Savior, Thank Jesus you, Christ. We certainly give him all honor, glory, and praise. Yes. Yes. We certainly do pay honor to our shepherd here at yes. Walking by Lord. Faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the ministry they signed to this house. The first yes. man, Reverend Harris. Yes, sir. Yes. White minister Jackson. Thank you, Lord. Thank God Hallelujah. for the deacon of this yes. house. The one that's here and the ones that are not here. Yes, sir. And we certainly thank God for each one of you, all yes. of God's children. Come on, Amen. Here. And the word of God, as you heard and you're hearing, will come from Matthew chapter 16. Thank you, so Lord. Thank you. Return there with me, Matthew chapter 16. I'll be lifting up verses 24 through 28. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 28. And when the people of God have it, they will say, Amen. 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 And the word of God reads as follows. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Mm -hmm. But what is it a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Yes. And the verse I would like to use as my text is verse 26, where it reads, For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. And the subject where I thought I'd like to leave with you today is, Distraction can lead to destruction. Lord, we thank you right now for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people. Let me decrease now. Holy Spirit, hide me in the shadow of your cross. Let me decrease that the word may come forth as an increase. Let me not say anything that's not of you, but let your will be done. You will operate my mouth, my tongue, and all that I say. And Lord, operate the ears of your people and the hearts of your people. They may hear and receive your word on today. And also operate on my ears and my heart because yeah. I am certainly Jesus. looking to receive a word from you all today. You, Lord, and Jesus. we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. Distraction can lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those two words, distraction and destruction, you find that they're not far apart. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you just change one letter in the word distraction, you will see that you have reached destruction. So we know that distraction can lead to destruction. Uh, we find today there are a lot of things in the world and it's all by the enemy's design that were created to distract us from our walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. A lot of distractions that keep us from walking the way that we should with Christ. Uh, some of them are little subtle things, uh, things that you know you don't really pay a lot of attention to and things that happen so subtle that they often come upon you and you don't even notice their effect until it's too late. Well, um, Some things that the enemy will put in front of you and you do a little bit of it at a time and you don't even realize how far you are drifting away from the Lord. But we need to be mindful that these distractions, if we're not careful, they can certainly lead to our destruction. Yeah. Uh, we remember when social media, well, I'm about to make some people mad right now, but do you remember when social media first came about? Mm -hmm. You know, we were excited. We said, uh, oh, we're a part of this new thing, and I can't wait to get my Facebook page. Uh, I, I got this new thing, and I'm going to be a part of this new thing, and, and this, this is so much fun. We can, we can reach out to our friends. We can reach out to our neighbors. We can make friends. And we can make neighbors. Yes. So everybody was so excited about this new thing called Facebook, which uh, we now refer to as social media. And we know that's not the only one. We yeah. know there's uh, Instacam, Instagram, you name it, they got it. 
What is, what is it? Snapchat. Snapchat. Twitter. Twitter. Periscope. Periscope. You name it. See, the children even know about it. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff out there. And, and if you're not careful about these things, you got to be careful. What, why, why were these things made? You may ask yourself, why, why were these things made? Everybody think that well, they were made because we can reach a whole lot of people really fast. But I want to caution you today because some of those things were made to distract us. Because some people get so caught up in these things that they forget about everything else. Some people spend the majority of their day. I've heard people that spend 12, 13, 14, 15 hours on social media. Yes, Lord, per day. Uh, the house ain't been clean. Some of them won't clean it in the beginning, but the house, sure enough, ain't being clean now. The children ain't eating because mom and dad are on social media and they will cook later. So the kids got to go in and find something to eat on their own. Uh, so we are so distracted by these things, and that was the purpose of their being made. We may think it was something to uh, enhance our life, but I say it was something. Now, this is just my opinion, but I say it was made to distract us because not only is it distracting us in our day-to-day -day activities and our lives, but uh, it is distracting the people of God yeah. as well, Amen. if the truth be told. That's true. Now, now, some people won't agree with this. Uh, they will even say that, but this is a way, AP, that we can reach so many believers and so many people. Yeah, a lot of people believe that. But we must also look at this. Does it give those people an excuse to do what God has told us to do, which is assemble ourselves with the saints? Uh, because I even heard in the prayer this morning when somebody said, well, uh, the ones who are not here because they sitting at home watching TV. But all of them are not watching TV. The majority of them are on their computer this morning. Yeah. And, and they may say that I'm on my computer so I can get a word, but what else are they getting? Uh, are they getting a lot of different opinions of uh, how the word of God ought to be preached and how it ought to be delivered? Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just got to come to the household of faith. Yeah, uh, sometimes you just got to assemble yourself. And then, you know, it, it has been warnings that have gone out about this thing and say, you know, be careful. social media. Yes, it can serve a good purpose yes. if people use it for a good right. purpose. Mm -hmm. But it also can serve as a mighty big distraction. Yes, right. Amen. And it can cause even, even pastors and some of the ones that are standing behind the, the pulpit are, are using it to distract them. Well. Because they're looking at what other people are preaching about on Facebook and they're saying, well, uh, I don't agree with that or, or I disagree with that. And, and, then they're having, and then they'll send back their little response and say, I, I don't think that's right, my brother. What you just preached is not right. But what they're doing is getting distracted. Don't worry about what that preacher is preaching. Worry about what you are preaching. Amen. Are you preaching what God has told you to preach? Amen. Uh, but see, some people are using this thing as an excuse uh, not to come to the house of God. Yeah. Uh, but no matter how we look at it, you may agree with that and you may disagree with that. That's fine. But no matter how we looked at it, it is a distraction. And some are, are already caught up in it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. And, and there are some who j they just can't. Can't get look. They 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 got just like I heard Dr. Jeremiah say this morning. He said his son bought him a a phone, a computer, and a tablet. And, and when somebody sent him an email, all three of them go ding ding ding. <laughs> you know, cause you know we feel like we got it. But see, those things can be a distraction. Yeah, you can. Because, see, some people are so hooked on it. When they're at home, they're on the computer. When they get in their car, they got the phone. When they get to work, they got their, their tablet. And they all, and even some of them to the point that the boss is telling them, if I catch you on Facebook again, I'll get you out of here. But they distracted. Some children can't even learn at school because when they're supposed to be looking in the book, they got their little phone out uh, so true. trying to see what's going on on Facebook. See, because they distracted and, and they scared they're going to miss something. Somebody going to say something about so-and-so and I'm going to be the last one to find out. So I'm going to sneak up under my desk and 
See who's going to what they talking about. And then I'm going to give my little comment to because I'm not going to be out of the loop. I got to be. And then the teacher said, Johnny, what are you doing? I, I, I'm doing nothing, teacher. I, I'm not doing nothing. It's a distraction. Yes. Amen. See, but so it's so many ways that we can be distracted by social media. And I say social media is good. If you use it for the right purpose, it is good. It is a way to reach a lot of people. I, I agree with that. You can reach people throughout the land. But that's not your only source. Because sometimes you need to uh, get those people to come into the house of God, too, Amen. where they can receive some strength, some guidance, some knowledge, and all of that. Why do you think God said, fail not to assemble yourself with the saints? There's a purpose Amen. behind Amen. it. So be careful with social media. Okay, I'm going to move on to something else because, I, as I said, somebody don't agree with what AP talking about right now. Help us, bro. So I'm going to move on to something else. Another way that we can be easily distracted is by the world events. Uh, everybody looks at the news now and everybody wants to know what's going on on the news. What's going on in this world? And a lot of us watch world news yeah. to find out what's going yeah, on. Right. Uh, we let the news and the things that are going on in the news uh, cloud our minds. Well. Uh, we let things that our leaders of the countries are doing distract us. As a matter of fact, we know for a fact how this whole thing is going to end, but we still let people distract us. We have a, a leader or a president who uh, will say anything that pops up in his head. You might as well accept that. That is a fact. Uh, and he doesn't really care who he upset by saying it. And people are saying he ought not to say that because he's going to start something. Well, uh, and there's one on the other side. He does the same thing. Uh, you make me mad. I'm going to say something to make you mad. And you better watch what you say to me because I got the power. You ain't got no power. Uh, you don't have no power. So what we do sometimes, we, we listen to all of these things that's going on, and then our hair start turning gray, and our hair start falling out, because we so worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, yeah, some people are worried right now. Uh, is that guy from Korea, is he going to send those missiles to Guam? Well, if he do, if it ain't the Lord's will, they're not going to be effective anyway. Amen. So don't get distracted about what they're saying and what they're doing and how they're arguing among themselves and, and all of these other things. It's just a mere distraction. What you should be doing is focusing on Jesus. Right. Because when this thing is all said and done, Jesus is the one that's going to make the last decision. Yeah. He's going to be the one that he's already told us how it's going to go. And if you look at your scripture, you can search from the front to the back, and there ain't nowhere in there where it says nobody from Korea starts the war. Well, mm -hmm. We already know how it goes. That's right. mm -hmm. So what we ought to do instead of letting those people distract us, we need to stay firm in what we believe Amen. and stay firm in what we know Amen. so we can help somebody else That's right. and tell them, don't worry about what you see. It's just a lot of stuff to cloud your mind. It's just a lot of stuff to distract you. What I would caution you to do, if you really want to know what's going to happen, first of all, get in the Word yeah. Amen. for yourself. That's right. Amen. Because, see, the Lord didn't hide anything from us. He told us everything that's going to happen and how it's going to happen. The only thing he didn't tell us was when, when it's going to happen. All right. But did he say be ready? Because it may come upon you. don't want anything to come upon you unaware. So you need to be ready. Work on being ready. Don't be distracted on what people are telling you on the news. If you let stuff wear you in the news, you'll stay worried 24 hours a day. And I, I'm just talking about that's just world news. Put local news in there with it. You'll worry yourself to death worrying about getting distracted. Because uh -huh. the Lord said, if you're going to pray, don't worry. Right. And if you're going to worry, then don't bother praying anyway. Because he got everything Amen. well in hand. Amen. And we got to trust that the Lord got it and knows exactly Amen. what he's doing. Yes, Lord. In Romans 12 and 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world, yes. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what we ought to learn instead of being distracted is by what man is doing. Let's just accept God's will. How about that? Can we do that? Yes. 
Can we accept God's will and realize what is happening in the world events? He's always working behind the scenes. Yes. And if it's his will that this, these missiles should go to Guam, then they will certainly go there. Yeah. But if it's not his will, it sure ain't going to happen. Yes. I don't care how many buttons you push. You can push buttons and you and, and what will happen is them rockets will sit right there. Okay. If the Lord don't say they're going, they ain't going. Because okay. the Lord is working it out behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So we ought to accept his will yes. and stop letting those wow. things distract us and cloud our mind. Amen. Because his will alone is what's best for us. Amen. How many of us are distracted by family? I ought to hear somebody say amen. Hey, 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 we let family issues distract us a lot, don't we? Uh, mm. See, you know, we got people in the family that we know, might as well admit it, toe up from the floor, yeah. might as well tell the truth now. And we know that, and we try to fix them. Yeah. We get distracted because we spend so much time trying to fix them. Oh my. We trying to fix our brothers. We trying to fix our sisters. Yeah. Children trying to fix their parents. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Parents trying to fix their children. Uh, we just got all kind of issues going on in family. Yeah. And, and you better believe those issues are there to distract us. Amen. Uh, when our sons and daughters are not doing like we think they're supposed to do, we'll spend more time trying to fix them than we do praying for them. Sometimes we ought to just pray about it and turn it over to Jesus. Amen. Yeah, I've heard people say, oh, I, don't I know my wife said it, and it is true. We done turned our children over to the Lord. To. We can't do nothing else with them. I know that's real. Uh, they grown now. Well, you know, these children nowadays, you know, they growing up fast, too. Yeah. I I'm going to tell you all something. Look, my wife get a, a picture of our granddaughter every day, and she look different yeah. every day. <laughs> She, she, look, she ain't but, what, a uh, couple of weeks? Is she a couple of weeks old yet? Two weeks. Two, weeks. two weeks tomorrow. She's sitting up, watching TV. Yes, Lord. <laughs> sitting in the car seat, smiling at what she see, waving at folk. Oh, Lord. Jesus. And I'm like, wait a minute. She, she ain't even a month old. She's doing all of that. See, children are growing up faster yes, now. Y'all yes. parents, you better be on your game. That's exactly right. Because if you ain't, these children will pass by you. Yes, Lord. Uh, but the thing about it is, when you worried about you, you trying to fix some things that you can't, God need to fix some of this. Amen. 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 Let them fix. Turn it over to Jesus. Yes, Turn it over to Jesus. Amen. Turn it over to Jesus. Yes. And you know what? He'll Amen. make everything Amen. all right. Now you can say that, but you better believe it too. Because if you don't, these people, look, children will wear you to death sometimes. Our uh, husbands will wear you to death sometimes. Wives will wear you to death sometimes. But you can't be distracted. All the thing you can do is pray and say, Lord, I give it to you. You made them. You know all about them. I'm going to let you have them now. There ain't nothing else I can do. I'm going to spend my time uh, worrying about what you want me to do yes, rather Lord. than worry about what they doing. Yes, uh, I'm going to just turn it over to you and let yes, you work it out. Do it. Yes, See, uh, and, and, and you know what else? Some people let our personal things, uh, our personal wants distract us. Yes. Um, you ever know anybody that wants something so bad, that's the only thing on their mind? Yeah. Uh -huh. See, oh. that's what happens. Sometimes we got things that we want and we ain't going to be happy until we give them. That's right. You know what? If you ain't going to be happy till you get them, some of you ain't going to never be happy because you ain't going to never get it. So you need to quit being distracted by what you want. You've been wanting it for 20 years. You've been wanting it for five years. I don't care how long you've been wanting it. You are not. Look, you ain't got it yet. You might not ever get it. Move on. That's right. Think about something else. Your personal wants don't even matter. Yeah. Or what the Lord is concerned about and what he said he would honor is your personal needs. Yeah. Not necessarily your wants. He already know what's best for you anyway. Yeah. And some of the stuff you want, he already know you don't need it anyway. Yeah. Some of us want some money. God already know you don't need no yeah. money. Because if I give you money, you ain't going to know what to do with yeah. it. You're going to start worshiping the money more than you start worshiping me. You already got enough distractions in your life. Now you're asking me to give you another distraction. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 
Somebody played that lottery, them 300 and something million, you know they won it. But the Lord said, not so. Because it's a distraction. Yes. And the only thing you're going to be trying to do now is trying to see how you can save God that money and how much stuff you can make and how you can hide from your relatives. Because <laughs> they going to want some of that. And you're gonna be, I got to move somewhere. You know, I got to get away from them. But it's just a distraction. So don't let the things that you want, unless you want Jesus... And if you want Jesus, you ain't got to worry about that because he already there anyway. Amen. And the only thing you got to do is reach out and he'll be right there. Yes, See, you don't have to worry about saying, I want Jesus and I can't get him. You can get him because he's right there for you. you. But all this other stuff you want, you might not ever get. Yes, Amen. Some of us even pray for things and, and the Lord heard our prayers. How many of us pray for jobs and careers? Some of us pray for jobs and pray for careers. But you know what? Some has let the blessing that we got distract us. Uh -huh. they, you know, some of us, uh, you know, I remember uh, I told my administrator and my wife, Nora, her name is Michelle. I told her, I said, look, uh, I'm going through a training thing right now. But once this training is over, I will never work on Sunday again. Amen. But I had to talk to the Lord about it, too. <laughs> is that right, Lord? <laughs> and he said, yes, that is right. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, I was talking mighty big there, but I, you know, I had to inquire the Lord, too, to see what he said about it. And he said, if you're going to be faithful to me like that, yes, it is so. And I'll tell you right now, I ain't worked Sunday since. And I tell God, thank you. Amen. We ought not to let the things that we ask God for, we ask him for a career, don't let the career move you away from the Lord. Amen. And, and then some of us are getting blessed on these jobs, and then on Sunday morning, when we fill out our envelopes, I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. Stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. You know what you're doing. But we got to remember <laughs> These blessings that God yes, gives us is not designed to be a distraction. That's right. We still ought to give him praise. We still ought to give him glory. We still ought to be humble in his sight. There is not enough riches in the world that should keep you from serving and worshiping the Lord. Amen. Because those people have placed jobs and careers as their priorities. That's right. Even putting the kingdom work before God's work. Amen. Don't you know jobs come and jobs go? You may be sitting on the top of the mountain today, but you may be down beneath the valley tomorrow. So don't put no faith in nothing like that. Uh, don't let jobs or careers distract you. So be careful what you put your trust in. Because when you trust in the wrong thing, it becomes a distraction and it can lead to destruction. Tell your neighbor, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. And as sad as it is to say, there are some distractions right here in the household of faith. Uh-huh. There are some that are distracted by what other people are doing in the household of faith. Uh, some can't even receive the word because they're distracted by what's going on around them. Uh huh. What they what, looking at? What somebody? What, I can't believe she came in here with that on. Uh -huh. You worried about what they wearing? And, uh, and and I can't believe. Don't look like she fixed her hair this morning. Uh, she looking uh, weared out. Uh, but you are not to be worried about that. Right. And, and then you look at the choir and be like, why in the world are they singing that? <laughs> uh, that song just, that ain't the right song they need to be singing right now. But they are so distracted. And don't you know that some are distracted by what the children are doing? I said children, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, some uh, mothers are distracted because what their children are doing. We got ushers for that. Let them handle that. Let the deacons handle that. You just worry about getting into the glory of God. And don't worry about because children go distract you. That's, right. that's, what, they do. that's what they do. <laughs> it ain't that they doing it on purpose. It's just that's what they do. It. You get a whole bunch of children in one place, they're going to do what children do. And you can look, I remember even when I was a child in church, I was a distraction. Okay. But I can tell you this much, okay. Roy Hodge, the only thing he had to do was look at me, okay. and the distraction was over. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's all it took. He didn't have to get up. 
He didn't have to tell nobody else about it. The only thing he had to do was catch my eyes and it's over. Because I, I already know I ain't going to be in church always. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'm going to have to go home. So I knew better than to be a distraction. But there are some children, that's, that's just what they do. So don't be distracted by what the children are doing. Uh, you know, there was certain, that is why we've been studying what everybody has an office in the church. They got jobs to do. Let them do their job. Now, if they report back to you that your child was very bad in the service, then you take care of that when you get home. That's right. And everything will still be fine. Amen. So don't be distracted by what others are doing. Uh, don't be distracted. You know, another way people get distracted because uh, some people will look at other folks and say, well, I don't know why they ain't praising God. They ought to be praising God. Y'all, you ought to be praising God. Amen. <laughs> That's what it is. You pray if you praising God, you won't know if they praising them or not. Okay. So while you worry about whether they praising God or not, you so distracted, you ain't gave them no praise yet. You ain't gave them no glory of sin. Amen. Don't be distracted about what they're doing or what they're not doing. That's right. And the one distraction is it happens right around maybe one o'clock. If you still at church at one o'clock, that's gonna be a distraction. <laughs> Because somebody's thumbing is growling and they're already wondering, what time are we getting out of here? I so would he sit down. I don't want to be the last one in the restaurant line. So some are worried about that. What time am I getting out of here? And Lord knows football season is right around the corner. Somebody going to be distracted every Sunday. I'm going to miss the game. Messing with that preacher right there. But what you need to be concerned about is what that preacher is saying. Yes, yes. Uh, that word that's for you. Football can wait. That's right. Uh, they, ain't, they, look, they ain't sharing their check with you no how. Uh, they making millions. How much they giving you? Uh -huh. You gonna sit right there and, and worry about I'm, I'm gonna miss the first quarter. So what? If you miss the whole game, it'll still be all right. Amen. But don't be distracted. Yes. And then there's some who who come to church and and, and, and the other half don't come to church. So now they're wondering, I wonder what they're doing right now. <laughs> I'm up here in this church, sitting up here in church doing my thing. I wonder what they're doing. Uh -huh. I wonder if they're on Facebook uh, trying to make some friends while I'm up here in church. Now they know they ought to be in church. You know what you need to do? Pray for them. That's right. That's all you Amen. Do. Keep praying. Keep coming. Keep telling you, keep worshiping God. Tell, like my wife said, tell God thing. And I guarantee if you keep doing what you're supposed to be doing, uh, not only doing it on Sunday now, but doing it uh, six other days of the week that you ain't in church, I guarantee you sooner or later, he coming. She coming. I know it to be true because here I am. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I didn't always go to church when my wife went to church. Now, I knew church. I was in church when I was a kid, but got in the military. You know, I'm a big boy now. You know, I'm in the military. I can do what I want to do. And, and, and that at that particular time, it didn't include going to church on Sunday, uh, especially since I won't be at home anyway. I don't know these folks. What I'm going to church for? She get on up and go to church anyway. So I was like, wait a minute here now. I'm sitting up here looking stupid and she going to church. I need to get myself together. So don't worry about what they're doing. You just keep on giving God the praise, giving God the glory. Keep on praying for them. Yes, Keep on amen. acting like a man or woman of God that you are or supposed to yes, be. Lord. And everything will be all right. Yes, so don't let that distract you. Yes, so. Don't worry about what they're doing. They're going to do it anyhow until yes, right. the Lord changes them. Amen. You just keep on praying. Amen. Uh, here's another thing we get distracted by. I kind of mentioned a little bit of it a while ago. Some of us get distracted by our finances uh -huh. or our lack of finances, right. if you will. Um, so we get distracted and we're so busy worrying about how we're going to pay that next bill. We get distracted and, and we forget to obey the word of God. Because right. God said he just asking for a tenth yes. of what you made. But, you know, we'll take that tenth and kind of incorporate it back in with everything else. And, and then we start laying these bills out and say, uh, mm, yeah, yeah, got to pay that, need that. If they don't pay that, they're going to turn my lights off. They don't, I ain't going to have my Facebook. I ain't going to have uh, this and that. So 
I got to pay all of these first, and then, I, I'm sorry, Lord, but uh, I only got like 3% left over, and I'm, I'm going to give you that. We distracted. Because we forget sometimes who blesses us. All these blessings come from God. But we forget that because we get distracted. And we worry about what man can do. Man can't cut off your lights unless God allows it. Amen. Oh, we know for a fact. My wife and I know for a fact because I'm telling you right now, if it came from between a bill getting paid and tithe getting paid, you can come out there and try to turn my lights out all you want to. But the tithe's getting paid. I don't care what you turn off. And I'm telling you, it's been a good thing for us. Amen. And I ain't changing neither. Amen. I ain't, hey, I know where my blessing come from. Amen. It is so. I encourage you today to try God. Just try. He said, test me to prove me. Test him out and see if he won't do it. See if he won't open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. And don't sit there worrying about the light getting cut off either. If you ain't paid the bill, so what? You know what happened? That come and say, well, uh, Mr. So-and-so, uh, I'm going to give you an extension. Yes, oh, hey, 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 hey. God did it for me. Oh, man, I paid God for us. Yes, because, yes. see, God can change their mind. Yes, yes. And he can change their thoughts. Yes, yes. And he can, do, he can make it so they can't even find your house to yes, turn yes. off the light. If that's what he want to do. Yes. Uh, they can ride around for hours trying to... Yes. I'm reading this address right now. I don't feel that under so I ain't even worried about it. Fuck you. I'm going to go back to the office. That's what God can do. You got to trust God first. Uh, you, you know, if you trust him enough, you give him that. Look, even if you want to give more than 10%, you can give him everything you have. And he will still bless you. Uh huh. Just like the lady who gave her last yes. mic, what she had, yes. she yes. gave it to the look. She gave it to God, and then that, that lady who gave it to the prophet, she gave everything, and then he multiplied her blessings. Yes. 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 That's the God I serve. Yes. Yes. If your God ain't blessing you, try mine, because yes. He's showing sure no blessing. Yes. So don't let finances distract you. Just do what yes. you're supposed yes. to do. Yes. First Timothy chapter one, uh, chapter six, verse seven says. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out of this world. Stop worrying about stuff. That's right. Stop worrying about money. Stop worrying about possessions. Yeah. It's just a distraction. If you got a house with no furniture in it, you still ought to tell God thank you. Because you do have a house, and you got a roof over your head. So don't worry about all that other stuff, because it doesn't matter anyway. As I told you, God knows what we God need. Know, yeah. Even before we ask, he already knows. Yes. He says, test me to prove me. That's you just right. heard it. He said, I will, will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing? You won't even have room enough to receive the blessing. Now, look, they say, look, here's another thing they say about us human. They say, we humans only use a small portion of our brain. Right. Mm -hmm. Did y'all yes. know that? Yes. So since we use a small portion... Don't let that small portion be filled with stuff that don't matter. <laughs> you already only use the small. That's why people stop doing stuff they're supposed to do. Because that little 